I'm Sir Tap Tap, and let's play Lemma. Parker is assisting here, aren't you? Yes. This is a first-person parkour-style game by uh, Evan Todd. A review copy of this game is provided free of charge by the developer. So, um, it's this surreal, voxel-based sort of first-person run-and-jumpy thingy. Um, why am I... why isn't my jump button working? Maybe it's the tutorialiness. Oh, yep, it sure is. Okay. It's one of those games where you can see your body. Um, I've gotten, I think, most of the way through this game. I like four plus hours in. Uh, Steam says six hours, but I leave the game idle. I'm never sure about my game times. I wish. Barker. Get your tail out of my face. I kind of wish game time were tracked, like, by how. Ugh. Sorry, my cat is putting his tail directly in my face. Um, like, I wish game time were like toggled by how active. Like, when you're active, it counts up. When you're idle, it doesn't. Because I play games not very active, and it makes it very hard for me to tell how long a game actually was. Which kind of annoying when I'm trying to review stuff and such. But uh, oh well. I've really enjoyed what I played. Um, it has a bit more of a puzzly focus than I initially expected. I'm not sure why the camera's being so jerky here. I will note the... I've got a fairly beefy computer here. I've got um, an Intel 47770, er, whatever you want to call that. Um, overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. Um, Radon 6950, which I know is a bit old, but should be able to handle this at 60. But it's, it gives me some grief. I think this is the right way to go. So we're, there's optional collectibles. I'm not entirely sure what they do for you, but they get, they unlock a lot of the lore. Well, not unlock, but, you know, show you a lot of the lore. Um, regarding performance, I went and had to kick down the recording, or the resolution to 720p for this video. Um... It's perfectly playable in 1080p, it was just get, dropping more frames than I was wanting to show for the video. The camera's being jerkier than it usually is right now, I'm not sure if that's the rain or what that is. Um, I will say performance, I don't want to make it seem like it's too horrible, but performance is definitely kind of a low point. It doesn't really affect my ability to play, um, in fact, oops. Um, one of the best things about this game, in my opinion, is how well it controls. Like, I'm really surprised that it actually works. So, yeah, we've got this dude we talked to on the phone. We can't talk to him right now. But we will soonish. And, um, so yeah, there's wall jumping, uh oh, wall climbing, which is, whoop, and we jump off the edge. This will not be a good game for vertigo-y people. You will be falling into horrible death pits. Um, I think, I mean, if you have vertigo or whatever, motion sickness, you probably know that first-person parkour games aren't for you. Um, so there's this sort of mysterious science experiment-y story going on here. The story isn't really a strong point, but it's, it's interesting enough to keep me to want to keep going. Uh, let's get our mouse cursor out of the way. Joan, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, we have this dude, Mark. And you can choose what you say to him. Sort of picks his response. Uh, yeah, we're just going to be honest to him. We're just fine. See, so yeah, the world has this voxely look to it. It doesn't look quite... like a, you'd expect a voxel-based game, because, you know, the textures are more high-res. Than you'd usually expect, but uh, they don't quite line up to the actual corners of the objects. But uh, there's a reason for the voxels, trust me. Well, you saw that bit of world like melding in there, so I'm not sure why it's so jerky. It isn't that jerky. I'm not sure if that's because of Bandicam or because of the settings I messed up to uh, get it to perform right. But. Uh, I usually play on 1080p with everything, with all the settings bumped up. Um, it has some frame drops, but uh, not enough to really get me killed. But I want it to perform right for, you know, video-y purposes. 
And I like the spawning in stuff. That's pretty cool. Oh, speaking of options, why are um, it has a pretty decent options menu. Um, it has borderless window mode, which I love. Uh, it doesn't work if you're not at native res, of course. But uh, it started off in borderless window at my native res, which I wish every game did that. Like, there's really no reason for any game to be defaulting to 720p non-borderless window full screen, in my opinion. And yet so many of them do, and why? I hate you. Um... But yes, so this game doesn't do that, and I'm quite glad for it. It's got an FPS limit. It was set at 120 for some reason. Um, by default. Parker, you're in the way. So yeah, you can set the FOV. I'm never sure what to do with field of view sliders. 80 is the default. I just kind of left it at that. It doesn't seem too bad. It's got a motion blur slider. I don't really like motion blur. I, I'm fine with motion blur. Parker in certain genres like it's fine in racing games but i don't usually like it in anything first person like where when you move the camera and that causes motion blur that's what i don't like but yeah you got some standardish options here um no anti-aliasing options is this unity i forget i don't know if there's a thing in the menu parker what is your thought on this matter parker oh now you're gonna shut up i see See, now we got run, uh, roll, bleh. wall runs, yes, words. And you sort of gain more abilities as you go on. There's more we can do, but we can't do it yet. Um, you have to wait for the tutorial that teaches you how to use it before you can use it. So yeah, there's some science-y stuff going on here. Um, it's an interesting look. It, um, I think the game looks fine. It's, uh, not all of it looks equally good, like, the more natural textures don't really work as well <coughs> with the voxely look, like these bricks here, but it does have this interesting surreal look to it, and, uh, I don't really think the graphics are a problem. Um, though considering the graphics, the, I'm not sure why I have performance issues, but, uh, oh well. I'm not too well versed in it. There we go. So yeah, I'm not gonna read these out loud. Um, I forget if we've been introduced to it yet. Have we? Yes. You can slow down time. I think this is right where the tutorial is. You don't actually need it for right here. It's actually not usually very useful. Ouch. But uh, you can slow down time to sort of make a jump more precisely. Not usually necessary, but it's a nice thing to have more useful later on there'll be you know the game difficulty ramps up as you might expect there's also these orbs we can collect um not sure if there's like some sort of oops true ending there's a quick save button mapped on the controller which is nice the game only seems to have two slots oh no it doesn't um it has two slots plus the quick save i don't know um i was trying to save more than two slots in my previous game. Maybe it only has two slots per game. The, I'm not entirely sure I care for the rolly. I'm not sure how you can make a first person roll animation that isn't nauseating, but uh, yeah. <coughs> this yellow block thing is pretty interesting. It's not yellow yet. There you go. Uh, as you might expect, that is not a good thing. I actually rather like the enemies in this. Um, I'm not going to show you too much of the game, probably. I'm not sure if we'll see more than just these yellow block guys. But uh, the enemies are very minimalist and, you know, voxel-based, of course. But um, due to their sounds and behaviors, they're actually pretty creepy. Um, or maybe freaky is more the word. Um, there's like these big black swarms of pixels that are voxels rather that have uh they make this really weird sound as they drone around and it really makes you want to not be anywhere near them they can kill you um death doesn't really matter too much in this game it's very forgiving you just respawn it pretty much does auto checkpoints almost constantly like let's just jump off here let's just die no problem 
we're pretty much back on the exact thing we fell off of. Dying is not a big deal unless you do it. If you do it too much in one area, I think it kicks you progressively further back. That's what it seems to do, which is kind of cool. Like, if you keep screwing up more, it's like, hey, come on, stop doing that. Make a plan, get good, etc. Oh. And the controls for the most part, uh, with a controller, you pretty much just got right stick, left stick, um, and the triggers. Oops. Oh yeah. And, you know, the roll slash kick. I guess we can't kick yet. Yes, Parker. So, yeah, the controls are pretty simple and they work really well. Um, I'm actually pretty surprised how well the controls work. Not sure why it's juddering the camera like that. I don't know if that's a... I don't know. It doesn't usually do that for me, but uh... Either the fact that I'm recording or some combination of my settings is making it do that. Alright, so... If you want 100% completion, you gotta pretty much... You gotta go out of your way, but... Um, it's usually fairly obvious when there's gonna be hidden stuff. Like, there's stuff you can clearly climb... Uh, hang on here. And the orbs in particular are usually pretty easy to see. The orbs are usually a bit better hidden, but you can see them from a long distance away. Uh, this is gonna end poorly. Oh! Yeah. Poorly. Uh, hmm. How do I get down? Oops. Kind of glad it didn't reload my save there. Where? I know there's a way to get down. Wait, can I just land and roll? There we go. Yeah, rolling reduces your damage when you get hit. Um, it can make a fatality into just grievous harm. You regenerate health pretty quickly. Oh, that was a new note. Excuse me. I'm not gonna make sure to get all the notes and orbs, but uh, I'm gonna try to. I haven't 100% completed the game. I haven't normal completed the game, but I, pr I played enough. I like it. Um, one of my bigger complaints was that there's this one section that we get into that is kind of samey, graphically speaking, that takes a very long time, but uh, <laughs> just about in time for me to get annoyed by it, the game did give me a new area. And you can wall run repeatedly like that. You have, and when you wall run, you start out going basically straight, and eventually you start to go down more and more, like a like in an arc. So the wall run works pretty well. I know some people complain about the first person animations. I think you just need to kind of get used to them. It provides some relevant feedback to what's your what your character is doing, so I'm glad it's there. Like the climbing in particular would be weird if you couldn't see your hands. So yeah, here's... what do we need to do here? Alright. There's a lot of puzzles where the game just lets you poke around. It doesn't have much of a tutorial. Like, your interactions with most of the blocks are pretty much, um, you know, figure stuff out on your own. Which is good. So what we need to do here is activate that. And then it flows through this white material. This white material is very important in activating stuff, like these grates you'll find. You need to activate those grates and, you know, form circuits with this white material to uh, solve some puzzles. And like I said, th this is more puzzle-based than, like, um, um, <coughs> what am I trying to say here, than Mirror's Edge. Um, both in the collectiness and later on there's more puzzles like that are actually properly required. There's one fairly large area I got sort of stuck in for a while, but then I started noticing... Alright, now we learn how to do that. Whee! And there's water that mostly just inhibits your movement. I don't think you can really intentionally go underwater too much. This red stuff is bad news, so we need to form a circuit. 
And you can destroy, since it's voxel based, you can destroy some of this stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, we need to figure out where we need to make a circuit. If you see these things, the towers, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. The towers let you talk to Mark. Sometimes it's required, and usually it's just you want to do it because it's, that's the source of the story. Why are you helping me? Because we're friends. No, we're not friends. We're not hurting anything. So there's some animosity between you two. Whatever, let's get back on topic. We're lying to each other, honestly. And that should be pretty obvious, but... Uh, psh, ignorance is bliss. Eh, yeah, whatever. Oh, maybe we don't need to make a circuit. Maybe we just need to get over to this. The red stuff does damage over time, but it will kill you pretty quickly if you are touching it for more than like a second. I love that fill-in effect. Look at that. Oh yeah, this is a pretty cool thing. So, you can extend existing walls by a fair amount. Not too far, but uh, a lot of the puzzles will absolutely require you to, you know, extend... I forgot to grab the ledge. Um... You know, you to make these new walls and stuff, and it's really cool. I was initially kind of puzzled as to why we were really doing the voxel thing here, but that is pretty much why. It, the game does some pretty cool stuff with that. Um, and you might notice this is the circuit board stuff, so we can, oops, use the stuff that we create to form new circuits. I'm... Not sure where that texture is offset wrong. That's strange. I'm pretty sure that texture was right the first time I played. I wonder if non-native resolution kind of messes it up or something. Yeah, here's a good example where it gives a pretty interesting surreal look to everything. Am I lacking antiscopic filtering? <laughs> There we are. There are a lot of jumps that look not quite possible, that are possible because of your ability to extend walls and crap, so... It gives you some... It's a pretty cool ability. It lets you feel pretty godly in certain areas. Yeah, that, that texture was offset correctly when I played before, so there's something not quite right in my exact combination of settings here. That's not a paper. Um, hmm. Hmm. What's up top? You can climb a fair bit up. It'll take a little while <coughs> to realize exactly how tall of a thing you can climb. But, uh... Oh, and that's another thing. Um, you can land on pretty narrow things. Oops. Not that narrow. And, uh, you'll be fine even if you need to roll to survive the land because of that, you know, generating land. And here's where we first need to create some ground in order to connect a circuit. I think this is one of our first not quite major, but our first multiple step puzzle. We need to get all of these things active. Is that the last one? Not yet. I forget if we do need to do something with that one. Oh! It just opened up, so yes we do. No! 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 Ah, splat! Sometimes you kind of want to die just because you can start off at a better place than if you survive. 
this spot. Also, I don't think wall running reduces your momentum as far as taking damage, fall damage works. Ah. What'd that do for us? Ah, that's what that did for us. Alrighty. So the whole jump and grab thing, I really love how simple the controls are. They, it really works well that, for the most part, you're just moving, looking, jumping, and either wall climbing or grabbing, which works... they work very well as mapped to a single button. Got any secrets over here? I'm sorry the camera pan is so twitchy. It's usually not like that. There, that's what I want. Mostly not entirely sure what the orbs do. Hmm. Ah. Oof. Wasn't well, that pretty? Um. There we go. My screenshot button for Steam isn't working for some reason. Wee. Oh, right. I, when I played before, I was forcing endoscopic filtering. That's why I'm surprised by the lack of it. I guess it doesn't natively have it. Barker. Barker, I can't see. See, as far as enemies, there's at least three types of enemies and some other non-enemy hazard things. Like, not ugh, mobile hazards. We're gonna get exploded. Um, also a cool thing, those exploding things, they actually carve out some of the voxels when they go. I think there's certain things that won't be destroyed, like, just to keep things possible. Uh oh But it's sort of cool to see their destructive effects on uh-oh. Okay, Parker. Come on. Ah. Ah. Yes. Just sit down, Parker, okay? That's what the slowdown is for. Uh, not that, though. Crap. I want that thing! Enemies are fairly rare, fortunately. They can be kind of a big annoyance. There we go, there's some destruction for you. Uh. There we are. Um. There we go. When you start to hear that swooshing effect, that's when you're going to take damage on landing. And if you hear that whooshing for more than a couple of seconds, you're going to die when you hit the ground. And eventually despawn you, instead of letting you go all the way down. Like, if we go into a huge bundles pit, it's just going to decide at a certain point, you know, okay, you're not going to survive this fall no matter what you do, so I'm just going to kill you. Which is a nice... I, I kind of wish more games did that, because like, it's really annoying to have to go down through a super long fall. Also, the draw distance for the orbs is very long, so that's very helpful in spotting them. Oops. Um, that's not quite what we're supposed to do. There we are. That's how you do it. I really like that mechanic. It works really well. It makes you feel it makes it feel really interesting. Hmm? Oh right. That's what that is. What's up, buddy? Go away, mouse. I can create things! Yay! What can we do? <laughs> well, let's touch everything! So this is more creating, or er, filling out circuits. Whee! So yeah, the puzzles, um, never get super crazy ridiculous hard. They're usually fairly well-contained. There's a few larger puzzles 
they usually don't spawn more than one map. And I don't think you can usually go back, so when you see that X orbs, Y notes... Oh, this is actually a good cliffhanger to end on. So we'll go ahead and finish this puzzle and then I'll cliffhanger you poor people. I'm not sure why the bloom is quite so crazy. Maybe it's because of the low resolution to exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit much bloom there. Um, the monolith control rods, nuclear reactor, blah blah blah. So yeah, we want to make the supports collapse because we're jerks. We're just gonna screw everything up. Hey Mark, Mark, I'm gonna screw everything up, buddy. What do you think of that, Mark? We're gonna touch everything. Everything. Oh right. This is good. I get to show you a couple more hazards here. Uh, these yellow things aren't very common, but... Let's see if we can get on one. There we go. They disappear real fast. That sound was it disappearing. So yeah, what we want to do here... Uh, hmm. Not sure we're high enough here. Yeah, we are. Okay. What we want to do here is fill in four circuits. like the nuclear control rods note thing he told us about. Oh, these these things. I love the creepy sounds they make. It's perfect. They will freaking kill you. Uh-oh. This is bad. Okay. He's gonna run over it. And they get more agitated as they get near you. I really love the sound those things make. They're really freaky. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. Yeah, this is bad. Oof. Okay, I think we're losing it. Okay. But yeah, I absolutely love the sounds those things make. Oof. I didn't think I was going to make that one. So yeah. I think this is another one of the walls. Yeah, it is. Wee. Oh, right. Um. Hmm. Never mind. Never mind. Um, this game is releasing on Steam. There'll be a link to the game on Steam in the description, like every video ever. Um, wish I didn't have to say that, but uh, I'm not sure how many people ever look in the descriptions. I always try to do a little blurb about the game, and I absolutely always give you a link to where you can find the game, whether you buy it or just play it online. Is that all of them? It gives you little tooltips that tell you whether you're done or not, and I th think I spaced out on the last one here. The cool thing about wall running, if you if you can wall run against two things, you can pretty much stay in the air forever. Um, I think you can actually gain height that way. Um, it takes some time to get acclimated to the physics, but once you do... You can do some pretty cool saves, like I just did there. Oh god. Oh! Goodness. Well, respawn me. There we go. That, that's an interesting quirk of those things. You can spawn stuff off the edge of those, but if they disappear, which they will if you manage to spawn stuff on them, um, your path, like, fades away. Uh-oh. No, we need to wall run. No, we need to... Okay, I kind of screwed that up, because you're... Uh-oh. Go away. Crap. Is that going to save that? Oh, good. This is good. The sky is going dark. We triggered a massive explosion. I'm sure this will end very well. What's going to... What's going to happen here? Oop. Oop. Excuse me. Wee! Sorry, Mark. You jerk ass. Pfft. Screw you, Mark. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> That's definitely the fastest I've died to that. So yeah. You need to run. The game will, on rare occasion, just give you a waypoint marker. And I kind of appreciate that. Um... 
because it, it keeps you on track here. Um, there we are. Boop. All right. So we're just going to try not to get swallowed up by the abyss here. Sorry to mention, I kind of accidentally destroyed you. That's... I'm sorry. You shouldn't have, like, suspicious giant death traps that trigger the entire dimension, because I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna be all over that, honestly. I just can't help myself when there's, like, this giant red button that destroys the entire galaxy. I can't avoid pressing that. It's just not reasonable to expect me to. Is that right, Parker? Is it? He's just glaring at me. Alrighty. Eight hours ago. <laughs> we. We're in the real world, probably. Also, one thing I'm not a huge fan of the the camera has this slight like fishbowl sort of thing going on. That's like it seems more excessive than it usually does in first-person games. It just feels it makes the FOV feel a little weird. John is your old advisor friend, blah blah blah. <coughs> so the game is not over. Or is it? It's not. It's like several more hours than this. Um, this is your first time. You've got some people murdering people. Startling picture above. That's sure startling. Whee! Oh, good. Good. Um. I figured that was supposed to kill me. Yeah. Where is safe? I don't care about stabilizing it. Haha. <laughs> Stupid universe. <laughs> Get wrecked. Oh, right, this is the area that <laughs> kind of drags on a little long, at least visually. I got a little tired of the orange things. Why is the camera being even worse? Um, whoops. Sorry, I keep noticing, but something's definitely weird about my settings right now. Um, but yeah, th this area is where we get introduced to a pretty big puzzle here. This, I'll go ahead and spoil this. This is a map. And so there's these 11 areas here we got to go through. Um, well, actually, we just want to obviously get to the end. But um, so it ends up being a pretty involved map, and it's possible to get a little lost, at least until you notice, like, until you start to understand how the map works. And, like, there's a whole bunch of puzzles in each area. And once you start to complete the circuits, like this, you got to complete some circuits like this thing here. We'll just watch this go. Make some beepy boopy sounds. And now, we can progress. And so there'll be a few of these, and you need to run around a big map. And it's actually pretty cool. <coughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. I keep meaning to end it, but it keeps having more cool stuff. So, this is another one of these enemies. For the longest time, I didn't know you could damage these. That's a pretty important skill. Um, so yeah, that pillar just sort of falls on you. And I love how surreal even the enemies are. They're just weird, evil block things that want to murder you, and they make awesome sounds. So that's pretty sweet. And uh, Parker, your tail is definitely in my face. Yes, it is. So yeah, this is Lemma. It is pretty cool. Parker, I can't see anything. When you play Lemma, you should probably not play with a cat in front of your face. That's... That is tip number one that I will give to you, my friends. Isn't that right, Parker? Yeah. <laughs> 